Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about modding a real Magpul PMAG to work with Sistema PTW internals. Now, basically what we're going to be doing is cutting some feed lips off the top of the mag, making some cuts into the magazine, and doing a lot of grinding and sanding to make sure that the Sistema magazine internal will actually fit into this real Magpul PMAG. So you can see that I've got a real one here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to harvest some parts from it. Here's a couple of modified ones that I've already modified previously. The black one you see here is slightly different from the tan one. As you can see there are a couple of retaining pins holding the internals in place. I found that you don't necessarily need these retaining pins, but they do help if you're trying to make a floated internal body mag. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but I will be showing you how to make this kind of a friction fit modded magazine. You can see all the different cuts we're going to make. There's some for the dust cover lips on the sides of the internal. There's one at the back side of the magazine for the little last round bolt catch functionality lever. And there's a lot of sanding and stuff that needs to be done inside. First thing we're going to do though is harvest the internals that we need. And basically what we're going to do is use a tool to depress the little gray retaining plate in the bottom of your real mag. Slide off the base plate cover, set that aside, we're going to keep that. The next parts you're going to need are the retaining plate from the bottom of the mag, and also the internal magazine spring that you can basically see here. Here you can see a unmodified retaining plate. It's got those little tabs on the inner portion that need to be removed. Here's a modified version with the little tabs that I was talking about previously removed. Basically, this is what the end goal is going to be. You can remove these with either a saw, a file, sandpaper, or a grinder. And here you can see the modified next to the unmodified. Here's your Sistema internal magazine body. And there's a couple mods you need to make here. First, remove the little edge pins that I'm indicating here. You can see they've already been removed on this particular magazine internal. And the other thing you're going to want to do is sand down this bottom little nib on the back side of the internal. Here you can see on the external magazine body that basically you need to sand down the feed lips or either cut them off down to the little molding mark that's actually already included on the magazines from the factory. This is basically where you want to grind down to, right above the little 556 by 45 bullet logo. Inside the magazine here you can see three ridges. Those also need to be sanded down. Basically just use a long file or some sandpaper if your fingers are small enough to get in there and sand down those ridges a little bit. The one on the front edge of the magazine is actually a little bit harder because there's a little bit of a ridge uh, bulge that sticks out for the, the top part of it. That needs to be completely ground down to be level with the rest of the ridge running down the internal portion of the magazine. Once these are sanded down, basically you can do a test fit of your internal body into the external body of your mag. Here you can see both pieces, and all you basically do is just kind of rock and shimmy the internal into the external body. If this is tight, do a little bit more sanding on those three ridges that we kind of sanded down previously. And also make sure that the rear portion of the internal that has that little tab is sufficiently ground down. Once you have this test fit done, you can kind of see where the little dust cover pieces are going to have to make a cut on the external body to allow for those to fit. Use a straight edge of a ruler to kind of line that up with your dust cover and use a pencil or a removable writing device to basically mark those areas where you're going to have to actually make some cuts so that those dust covers can fit. You can see that's basically what we're doing here in the video and it's a really simple process. As you can see we've basically got our marks lined up with the dust cover plate. So flip the magazine over and make those exact same kind of marks using a straight edge or a ruler on the other side of your magazine. Again, here you can see the marks in place lined up with the dust cover. Now take your internal out of the external PMAG. Set the internals aside. And now you're basically ready to start making some cuts for those dust cover cutouts. Just make some starting cuts with a hacksaw or any other kind of straight edge saw that'll cut through the polymers fairly easily. You could use a rotary tool for this, but I highly recommend doing as much of this process by hand as you possibly can. That'll make sure you don't accidentally use your power tools to take off more material than needed. Here you can see the little starting cuts that I made, one on each of the four cuts we're going to have to make. 
Once you have those in place, you can place your straight edge saw across the magazine through both cuts, and that'll basically make sure that when you're cutting down, you've got a nice, clean, straight cut that's the same angle on both sides. Make sure to cut along the line that you marked, or else you're going to basically have something that is kind of lopsided and doesn't look very professional. Do the backside down past that little first little t ridged tab, and then move on to the front edge portion of the mag. Do those cuts, bring them down to the same level, and then basically you're going to use a Dremel or some kind of tool. Uh, you could use a drill and then some kind of hacksaw or jig blade to actually cut across. I used a Dremel basically and just kind of pushed down at the end of the cut, and then I basically dragged the Dremel with a grind bit across to meet the other vertical cut that I had made. This basically just kind of removes that whole little tab out of the mag fairly quickly and easily, and it gives you a fairly nice looking cut that you can use to use as a basis for grinding down with a file later on. You can see here, this is kind of the rough cut that you get after you use the Dremel. Obviously, we're going to want to clean that up with a file. So basically, you can see here, we're just using a file to go through and square off the corners, as well as kind of just make everything nice and neat looking and less jagged and rough. Make sure to do the front and rear portions of the cuts as well as the bottom. You can see here that when doing a test fit, I noticed the internal didn't quite seat all the way in, so I used the file to file some more material off of the front of the cut that I had made. Now, we want to start seating the PMAG with the internal into the gun to see if it's going to fit. I noticed here that basically the mag body, the external PMAG body, will not actually seat all the way into my PTW. Now the issue here is that the cuts that we made in the sides aren't allowing enough downwards movement for the internal to sit low enough that it'll allow the external to click into place. So what we need to do in this case is to file down so that the internal will basically sit lower in the external body. Do this incrementally so you don't take off too much material, just so that basically you can seat your mag with the internal and external and it'll work in the gun and lock into place. You may have to depress your magazine catch for them to even lock in at this point because you don't have a little ridge for the magazine catch to ride over yet. Now what we want to do that we've got the internal seated inside the external is make that rear cut so that our last round bolt catch functionality will actually work. Use a hacksaw or a Dremel tool as you did before to make those tab cuts and we're going to make a tab cut on the rear of the magazine basically. So basically cut straight down from the inside portions as you'll see here. And then again, use your Dremel or whatever you want to use to join those two cuts together and remove the entire little tab. I used the Dremel to clean up the edges a little bit, but again, we're going to want to clean the edges completely with a file because this is the kind of rough mess that you end up with with the Dremel. So use your file, square off the corners, make it look nice and neat. And then another thing I like to do, again, just to make it look a little bit cleaner, is to use a flat-edged file to basically kind of file the back side of the two tabs that are remaining to be flush with the main body of the magazine. You can see me doing that right now, and I'll give you a close-up of it in just a moment. I specifically like to do this so that there's a solid amount of clearance for that bolt catch functionality lever on your internal portion of the mag to actually sit and engage. So here's where we're at now. You can see we've got the dust cover cuts and we've got that rear bolt catch cut as well. The next thing we want to do is, as I said previously, make a little bit of an angled cut on the external body of the mag so that when you insert the mag and the internal into the actual PTW, the bolt catch can ride over this piece and doesn't just get caught preventing you from having to push the bolt catch while inserting a mag. Make this little angled cut right above the X45 on the side of the mag that has the catch, and you should be able to insert your mag freely into the PTW without pushing the bolt catch down. Now we're going to work on the base plate functionality with the retaining plate as well. So make sure you file down the plate as I showed you in the beginning of the video, and then basically what we're going to do is use some, not all, of the magazine spring that we harvested from that real PTW mag. Realistically, you can use any magazine spring. The one I'm using is actually from a standard Stenag magazine. It's not from a Magpul PMAG. This is about the amount of spring you're going to want to cut and use. Basically just a, a simple 
single link with a little bit of an S shape to it. Once you have that cut off, hopefully you have a vise or something you can clamp it into. And then I like to just kind of bend it around so that it'll sit nicely for our purposes. I like to flatten off the kind of cornered piece that you see there so that it's nice and flat. You can see me squaring it up on the edge of the vise. And then the other thing I like to do is basically bend the flat portion or the uh, straight edge without the hook on it to kind of bend in on the spring itself uh, at a right angle. This basically makes it so the straight portion doesn't just slip down between the internal and external bodies of the magazine. This will become more clear when you see how I attach this and put it in place. Attaching the spring piece to the actual uh, retaining plate is very easy. Magpul includes some little clips kind of on the, the retaining plate that you'll, you'll see when you start looking at it more clearly. Clip your spring into it just like I've shown here. And then essentially what you, all you need to do is squeeze these into the bottom of your external magazine. What we're doing is basically using the spring to put pressure between the bottom of the internal mag from Sistema and the retaining plate from the original mag. This gives us real functionality on how the base plate functions. And you can see that you just slide your base plate over top and the retaining plate will click into place and prevent that bottom plate from sliding on or off of the magazine at will. This is pretty much all you need to do. If you have any issues with fitment or feeding in the PTW, you're going to have to look into basically removing some additional material or possibly putting some pins into the uh, magazine like I showed on that black mag that I had modified previously. You don't want to file too much or you're going to have fitment issues and feeding issues with your gun. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and someone from Blackthorn Airsoft will be more than happy to get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Thanks for watching and get out and play.